Yeah. <laughs> this is me. I'm a lesbian. <laughs> and I love it. Hi, I'm Jay. I'm a non-binary queer makeup artist and I'm here today with the It Gets Better project to interview an iconic lesbian writer and activist, Carolyn Weathers. And today we're going to give her a bold and prideful look of her choice while also learning more about her history and her work in activism. Makeup is a big part of my life, mainly because it's my favorite way of expressing myself and I really love the transformative properties that I can achieve with makeup. Um, I can look completely different one day, take it off and start over again. And sometimes in life, it's nice to be able to start over and to be able to look however you want to look that day. I'm Carolyn, she, her. I'm a writer, I'm an activist. My books are uh, out of print, but that doesn't mean they're not good. They're great, by the way. The uh, Lesbian Writer series, uh, I was the inspiration for it and was the first writer. As a librarian with City of Los Angeles, I was instrumental in getting the gay and lesbian writers into the Central Library. I'm gonna start with your skincare. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna kind of prep your skin for the makeup, but while mm -hmm. I'm doing this, can you go ahead and tell us more about your upbringing and kind of sure. what it was like growing up? Now it's a Texas Baptist preacher's daughter which isn't as hideous as it sounds like because my parents were way ahead of their time. My sister and I were full of mischief. She was expelled from college in 1957 for being a lesbian, or what they called it at that time was moral turpitude. And my parents accepted her. So we just finished prepping Carolyn's skin. We're gonna go with a more bold look for Carolyn. We're gonna emphasize her eyes a little bit and a little bit of her lips as well. I'm gonna start her foundation and while we're doing that, can you talk about how you got into queer activism? Well, actually, the year I started getting in, involved in queer activism would be 1963 in um, a drag show out at one of the gay bars. And we invited some uh, prominent straight people to come to this. So they did, and it really started this kind of dialogue. Can you give us a little more like historical context of what was going on at the time, like politically? In 63, mm -hmm. the civil rights movement was just starting. And I can't really describe that. It was just that excitement that something's happening here. And I was the first out lesbian on a Los Angeles talk show. It was in 19, October 1970. It was the um, Regis Philbin show. It was before he became nationally known. It was a local show. So out of all the things you've done in your career in the name of queer activism, could you tell us one or two times um, where you did something especially wild or out there? There was, um, I think it was Sherman Oaks up in the valley there. Mm -hmm. And they had, they had, you know, women's tennis organizations there. And they were very um, homophobic. They made that very clear. So my friends and I, we went up there, we had our tennis rackets, and we had witches' brooms attached to our, to our tennis rackets. And we came out, you know, kissed each other. Mm, good luck with the term. Mm, good luck to you, honey. Mm. And we started, went out in the court, started sweeping it with our witchy, witchy lesbian brooms. That's and they're just like. <gasps> so finally, they all moved away. They, they stepped aside, like, oh God, they're gonna touch us. <laughs> yeah. They're touching our tennis court. Yeah, I'm gonna work on your eyeshadow now, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Um, before we get into that, can you tell us about the first gay bar experience that you ever had? Well, <laughs> <laughs> the one I remember was called The Country. And they called it that because it was out mm, past the city limits, so we could dance. So we would all be out dancing, and these, these were mixed men and women. They had to be. And I just remember one time, particularly, they'd, they'd come to you know, take away a, a paddy wagon of us and arrest us. We, we had all had been dancing, you know, same lesbian and gay couples. When the, <laughs> when, I'm sorry, when the police opened, I still remember this, it still tickles me. When the police opened the door, we immediately switched 
<laughs> to dance into heterosexual couples, just immediately, just bang, doing the bossa nova. <laughs> um, and the police walked in, and here we are, just these happy heterosexual couples. Oh my gosh. And uh, they, they would walk around the room looking, you know, two women with their hands touching, or two men with their feet close together. That's what they would look for. And they would be so angry, because it would pull one over on them. Uh, you're mostly known for your work with the Gay Liberation Front. Can you tell us about what happened at the Biltmore Hotel? At that time, we were considered mentally ill, and we were treated by electric shock aversion therapy. The Gay Liberation Front decided that we would go uh, pr protest this. So it was the Biltmore Hotel, fancy, elegant Art Deco hotel in one of the ballrooms there they were meeting. And we went in and we took our, seated ourselves among the audience. It was Dr. Philip Feldman. He was a psychiatrist from London, I think. And he was showing this film on how he cured us with electric shock aversion therapy. So we'd had enough of that. And I think it was Don Kill Hefner jumped up and said, are we gonna stand for this shit? And we all stood up and said, hell no. And we got up to the stage and we stamped our feet. Finally, Dr. Feldman sat down and realized he, wasn't get to show, he wouldn't get to show his film. And what we made them do was to sit down in small groups and just talk with us and hear our stories from real, healthy, happy homosexuals. And about two or three years later, the American Psychiatric Association removed us from the what's it, DMR, Diagnostic and Statistical Mental Problems. They removed us, so being we weren't we weren't mentally ill anymore. I had just finished this little warm, smoky eye look on Carolyn. We're just gonna curl her lashes and add some mascara, and we'll be right back. Okay, now that your eyes are pretty much done, I'm trying to keep it natural, but more than what Carolyn would typically do for herself. And um, we're gonna go to the lips. While I'm doing the lips, can you tell me of any young people that inspire you today through their activism? You know, I never can think of just one young person who inspires me. It's a little bit of this, this person there, over there, this one, and, and in general, it all comes together in a big hole. I just can't name one name. And which reminds me about young people and what they can do today, lots. Unfortunately, the clocks are going back. There are many, many improvements, so much progress that has been made, and I'm proud to have been a part of it. But you can see what's happening with the ultra-right. You can't stop, you can't stop. So stick together and, and keep up the fight. Okay, Carolyn. Okay. We're all done with your look. Mm -hmm. Thank you for everything that you shared with us today. I learned a lot. And now um, I hope you like what I did on you. We're going to find out. I'm scared. Ta-da! No, I like it. I like it because it's got kind of a strange look to it. <laughs> no, I like that. <laughs> I like the way it just stands out, like, mm, you know. Like Take, what? Can you do that again? Mm, <laughs> this is me. I'm a lesbian. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> Take that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carolyn wanted something that would enhance her natural beauty, but also bring out the boldness that we see through her activism and her life, you know, as an out lesbian. So I wanted to do something that she wouldn't normally do on herself, something that wasn't going to be too wild and nice and warm to really bring out her blue eyes. And we just did a smoky look on the eyes with some cute little false lashes. Uh, we did a coral lip to kind of complement the eyes and on her cheeks I just used a gentle nude pink blush just to get some color back in her face and I think she really liked it. I think it looks great on her and it really does speak to her energy and 
her attitude about the world. <laughs> I'm Jay. I'm Carolyn. And, and we're, we're here, here to, to tell, tell you, you it gets, gets better. better.